Hi there, welcome to our today's video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to register for SHA or SHIF on afiayangu.go.ke. And I know most of you are confused. Uh, you are hearing of SHA, you are hearing of SHIF. And it's a, a bit confusing, but I hope at the end of this video, you'll be able to know what this is. And uh, you'll also be able to learn how to register for the same. So we don't have much time. Why can't we get started? Now, uh, I did the first video on how to register for SHA on SHA.geo.ke. Today, I'm doing it on afiayangu.geo.ke and uh, we'll see the difference between the two websites. But uh, let me give you what this means. So first of all, you have to visit this website. And then uh, it says take charge of your well-being with Afia Yangu. Afia Yangu uh, simplifies medical record management, insurance tracking, and health monitoring. Seamlessly uh, organize our healthcare data, appointments, and insurance covers with our user-friendly platform. So you can sign in with SHA or just scroll down about Afia Yangu. At Afia Yangu, we simplify healthcare for Kenyans by centralizing all your medical records in one place. Our platform helps you easily track your doctor visits and the facilities you visit, giving you a clear and comprehensive view of your health history and ongoing care. And then you can move down here. You learn how to register. But that is why we are here, okay? You can read more about SHA or SHIF. <laughs> but all I want you to do is you can either sign in or register. So I want you to click on register. Register for universal healthcare and SHA with Afia Yangu. Register for that, blah, 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 Afia Yangu account. You can read through all this. But what I want you to do is to click on proceed. And you can register as a Kenyan, foreign, and refugee. Although foreign and refugee are not available, so you'll only register as a Kenyan. Just uh, like that. And then you'll click on proceed. Okay, send code to this number. So all you need to do is to click on send code. And then a code will be sent on your phone. All you need to do now is to key in the code that was sent. And then click on proceed. Here, you'll have to set a four-digit PIN, a PIN that you can easily remember when you're logging in. You'll also want to confirm the PIN that you've set and then click Proceed. Here, your PIN has been successfully created. I want you to click on Proceed. And here, we have the instructions. And here, it gives you the steps that you need to take for you to complete your registration. So number one is registration and you have to give the basic information which includes your ID number and other additional information that you can be asked maybe about your employment, about your monthly income and all that. Then you'll also give the contact and address information which includes your phone number, your email address, your mailing address and all that. After that, you'll need to confirm your details and submit. Of course, the two details that you've given above. Then when you scroll down, the second option is adding dependents. So a dependent is someone who is eligible to receive benefits under the primary insurer's policy. This often includes spouses, children, and sometimes other relatives who are not financially independent. So after self-registration, you can be able to add your spouse. And here, you shall be required to provide proof of marriage in the form of a marriage certificate, affidavit, or letter from the chief, which confirms that you people are married. You'll also be required to provide their phone number, and an OTP will be sent to them for consent. Now, on adding a biological child, you need to provide the child's birth certificate number or birth notification reference number. That is if they are under the age of 18. And if the child is 18 years or older, you need to provide his or her ID number. If the child is between 21 and 25 years old, proof of enrollment in school is required for addition. Children over the age of 25 can be added if they are disabled 
and under your care. You can also add an adopted child. So here you need to provide the necessary adoption documents as evidence for the adoption. The above rules regarding adding a child also do apply. Now, on adding a child as a guardian for a child in local parentis, basically local parentis means you are acting in the place of a parent, taking on the responsibilities and duties of a parent for someone else's child. Provide the necessary court documents as evidence for assuming parental responsibilities. The above rules regarding adding a child also apply. You can also add a disabled dependent. You can add other immediate relatives, for example, mother, father, brother, and sister who are disabled and are under your care by providing their national identification number. So that is all about adding dependents. Now, the third stage is biometrics verification. So here you need to visit your nearest agent registered with the Social Health Authority bringing your original ID card and application reference number to undergo biometric verification, which constitutes the final step in your registration process. Then dependence biometric capture, all your added dependents under the age of 18 need to get their biometrics captured. So I just felt like taking you through all that for you to first understand what is required from you and the various steps that you need to take before you proceed. Now, after understanding all that, you can click on continue registration. It will take you to this page where we have to go through the three steps. First, you need to upload your recent passport photo. And here is the passport photo for my client. He has the consent that I'm making this video. So click here and then choose camera or gallery. I'll click on gallery. And here I will locate the photo and click open. I will resize the photo to make sure that it is fitting in this box. So I'll move it down just like that and stretch it just like that. And then I will center it. And after that, I'll click on this tick and it has been uploaded. Uh, what is your employment status? You can choose employed, self-employed, sponsored or organized group. So they removed unemployed. So I feel that the sponsored one really represents those who are unemployed because this one applies if you lack a form of employment generating income and instead receive income from another source. So I feel this is okay to click there. And then what is your gross monthly income? Here you are going to calculate how much you are making at the end of the month. And you will put here the figure. Please put here a genuine figure. Do not over exaggerate because this figure is going to be used to calculate what you're going to pay at the end of the day. And maybe just for your knowledge, you'll be paying 2.7% of your income every month. But the least that you can pay is 300. So I'll put here the figure. What is your civil status? So you can choose between these four. I'll click on married. Are you living with disability? Choose the right one and click next. And here now you need to fill in some information. And here on phone and email address, you're going to add the relevant information if you have. But some of them are optional. So you will fill as required. Now the current address residence, are you within Kenya or outside? We are in Kenya. So you need to put your residential address. And I'll just put here the residential address just like that. On residence information, here we'll need to put the county. I'll click here and then search the county that this client is from. And then click to choose that very county. The sub-county, I'll click here. And then scroll down and click on this. On the word, now I'll click in there and choose the word just like that. After filling that, the primary care network will show you the available care centers around your location and you can scroll through to see what is around. Then click next. And here you need just to go through the information to make sure that what you've given is right. You'll scroll through and read. In case there is a problem, you'll go back and edit it. 
And after that, you have to declare that the information you've given is true. So I'll click this checkbox and then click on submit. After that, you'll be brought to this window. Details updated successfully. Welcome, Alfred. This is a history detailing your hospital visits and medical history. And then we have means testing. You are required by SHA to provide information about your household characteristics. Click get started to begin. So first I'll take you through this page to see the different options. I'll come and click on get started. Do you have dependents? Before continuing with means testing, please ensure you have added all your dependents. Adding your dependents is required to provide accurate household information. If you haven't added them yet, click add dependents to update your profile. Once your profile is complete, you can proceed with the means testing. So I'll click on add dependents and unfortunately it's not working. Let me click again. Aha, let me click on proceed to means testing. It's still not working. Click on your profile and then uh, I want you to click on uh, income. You can see the information on the income, then dependents. And here we can be able to add a dependent. Click here and then we can add a dependent in the household. First, you'll click and select the relationship. And we have these options. Click on, for example, spouse and then click on proceed. Now you'll put here the identification, uh, which is national ID. And uh, just allow me to key in just uh, like that. Then put here the phone number, the working phone number for your spouse. And just allow me to do that uh, pretty quick and click on send. Now an OTP, remember I told you an OTP has to be sent to your spouse for her consent or for his consent. Now after adding that dependent, you will go through the process of updating your profile to 100%. I may not cover everything in this video. You can check my first video up here, which I was able to take you step by step. So once you do that, if you come here on overview, you can see we've been able to submit our very uh, request and we've been given a reference number. Now here you are told that you have successfully registered to Social Health Authority. You may proceed to add your dependents and view your health records. So you can view the records here or you can download the application. I'll click on here and then we have been able to download this very certificate which shows that we have applied for SHA. And then what is remaining is now you will go to a nearby Huduma Center and then you will take your biometrics. If you added dependents, their biometrics will also be required. After the biometrics have been taken, now your registration will be complete. And from there, you can now start receiving healthcare using your SHA or SHIF account. Uh, so you've noticed I'm using SHA and SHIF at the same time. Don't be confused. It is the same thing. Only that it's being branded with different names here and there. But SHA is basically Social Health Authority. SHIF is Social Health Insurance Fund. So it's the same thing. So whether you are calling it SHA or SHIF, you are basically referring to the same, same thing. I hope that this video helped you. And if that is the case, you already know what to do. Boop that like button so that this video can be recommended to more people. And that will help other people who are seeking on how to register for SHA or SHIF get this video and it will be very helpful to them. If you have any question, drop me a comment. I'll be able to respond to the questions that I can be able to answer. And if I'm unable to answer, I will refer you to a person who can correctly answer your questions. Otherwise, at this moment, I want you to click anywhere on the screen to watch our next video. And I'm pretty sure that I will see you in that video. Peace.